Doom is the quintessential boomer core first person shooter, and also peak port patrol material. Releasing in 1993, being light years ahead of what most people's computers could even hope to run smoothly, porting Doom to anything that wasn't a PC became a dick measuring contest for computer nerds, and as a result, the late 90s saw the game get ported to just about anything that had a processor. Obviously, nowadays we have the meme, Will It Run Doom, which is like the antithesis to Will It Run Crisis, almost mocking how easy it is to make the game run on even the most obscure pieces of modern tech. But programmers of the 90s didn't have that luxury, and thus birthed several ports of Doom, which were all weird in their own unique ways, creating a virtual treasure trove for freaks like me who look at games that run and look like trash, but because they're doing something technically impressive, makes them come in their panties regardless. We've already had a look at Doom on the Game Boy Advance in the past, and what with Doom Eternal releasing uh, vaguely recently as of the release of this video, it seems like the perfect time to take a crack at another weird port. Welcome to Port Patrol the show where we look at weird and interesting ports and spin-offs of video games, and today we are taking a look at Doom for the Super Nintendo. Developed by Sculptured Software Inc., the Super Nintendo version of Doom is, in all honesty, absolutely incredible. Look anywhere on the internet talking about this version of Doom, and you will find people absolutely trashing it. But as always, I'm here to be the needless contrarian, so I'm going to be spending the rest of this video telling all of you why you are wrong. Of course, I did go in with very low expectations, like somewhere down here. Seeing that this is the console that struggles to hold a steady frame rate playing Star Fox, which is literally just a black void half the game, and sure, while it isn't really smooth or pretty, it holds up a damn sight better than I would have expected it to. The absolute madman behind most of the work for this game was Randy Linden, who loved the original game so much he endeavoured to make it playable on a more mass-market system, so more people could play it. Of course, had he waited two months, he could have made it for the PlayStation instead, but still, he did it. While it may be missing a few levels, as well as the floors and ceilings, it's Doom. Running at like 10 frames per second, but I'll be damned if those aren't the most playable 10 frames per second I've ever played. Okay, I'm a little more resistant to lower frame rates than the average person, seeing that like, 90% of the stuff I talk about on this channel runs at around the same speed, but I didn't actually find it that annoying. I certainly never died because of it. Plus, I feel the original three episodes of Doom are quite forgiving, level-wise. You don't need to be precise with your movements or anything. Had this included episode 4, or was a port of Doom 2 with their precise platforming sections and just terrible level design, I would have been a million times harsher on it. But I'd say the levels of Doom 1 hold up pretty well here, and like I said, it's not likely that the low frame rate is gonna make you walk off a cliff or anything. One thing I find really cool about this version of Doom is that it was made very differently to all the other console ports of the day. The first console port of Doom to enter development was the Atari Jaguar version, and near enough, every console port made afterwards was based on that Jaguar port. And first of all, I just want to say how much I love that. What other game can you think of where the Atari Jaguar version is like, let alone the stepping stone from which every version is made, but like, actually relevant at all. So while all these ports slightly differ from the Jaguar version, they all feature the same cut levels and altered level geometry that was made in that original port. The Super Nintendo version, on the other hand, is based completely on the PC original, with the map files being directly imported across, 
So areas that had their geometry scaled back, even still in the PlayStation version, are fully intact here, which is absolutely wild. The Super Nintendo version of a game has more complex level geometry than the PlayStation version. Like I said, peak Port Patrol material. So while technically you could make an argument that this game is graphically better than the PlayStation version in a weird way, there are still cutbacks, even going beyond the textures and frame rate. The game is missing five levels from the original Doom's campaign, and to my surprise, Mount Cerebus was not one of them, which sucks for me because I absolutely cannot stand that level at the best of times, let alone when it's like this. Enemies in this version also behave differently. To save cartridge space on sprites, enemies are literally incapable of looking in any other direction but straight at you. The downside to this is that enemies can no longer infight with each other, but I will say it does make the game, like, oddly more unnerving. Entering a room in this game and seeing every enemy already directly staring at you, it's like they were expecting you. The pinkies are especially scary now, barreling directly at you at mock speed rather than randomly zigzagging across. Honestly, probably the worst part of the port is that you can't circle strafe. I've seen some people online speculate they removed it to make up for the fact enemies can't look around or fight each other, but that sounds like bollocks to me. I don't know why you'd make a gameplay objectively worse for the sake of balancing difficulty. Besides, if anything, I'd say the fact they can't look away from you is probably more of a reason to include circle strafing, right? Shotgunners and the regular pistol guys are like a million times more threatening now they practically can't miss you. The thing is though, while I died some really stupid deaths because of the lack of circle strafing, I did eventually get used to it, which I feel like is sort of the catchphrase of this game so far. And once you do get used to it, you'll find an acceptable version of Doom, which yes, is really weird, and yes, there's practically no reason to play it over any other version we have nowadays, but it's still a fun little novelty, and is still quite fun to play. So far it feels like I've just talked about stuff that isn't in the game, but there is still quite a lot here to enjoy. Including the gore, which surprised me because it all got censored in the later released GBA version of the same game. Though apparently that was to make it have a lower age rating to increase sales. And honestly I never minded the green blood, I mean, they are like weird alien creatures, why wouldn't they bleed green? It was still a surprise to see full-on red blood splatters here though, which makes it beautifully match its bright red cartridge. All the enemies made it across, though the only one I can't really confirm is the Spider Mastermind because, like, I don't know, I guess that could be him. The music is also pretty good. I feel like the softer instruments of the Super Nintendo lend themselves a lot better to the slower, more atmospheric tracks because some of the more heavy metal songs sound like they're being played at you through a sock, but it's still a pretty cool take on the game's soundtrack. And finally, if you still aren't convinced that this is an incredible port, that the developers didn't go all out on making the most feature complete version of Doom for the Super Nintendo there could possibly be, they threw in support for the Super Scope, the Super Mouse, and even, and I can't believe that this is a sentence I'm about to read out loud, if you and a friend have two Super Nintendos, two copies of Doom, and two expand modems, you could play online multiplayer death matches. Doom on the Super Nintendo has fucking online multiplayer. I don't think I need to say anymore. 
I'm not sure if Super Nintendo Doom is something I would exactly recommend you play for yourself. I completely understand that the poor frame rate will be a barrier of entry, too strong for a lot of people. And to be honest, a lot of the wow factor about the port, you're probably getting just by watching this video. It's like, oh wow, can't believe that's running on a Super Nintendo. And like, yeah, once you're over that, it's just a weird version of Doom, but if you're a really big Doom fan, or a freak like me who finds ports like this fascinating and has practically played nothing but Doom for the entire year so far, I think you'd be surprised at just how well this holds up.